Hey guys, Richard Holdner here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about Gen 5 L83 5.3 liter performance. And after finding out how much power these things can really make, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS stuff is dead to me. Okay guys, how do we coax over 500 horsepower from a Gen 5 5.3 liter L83? That's what this video is all about. The amazing thing is how little it took to push one of these 5.3 liters over the 500 horsepower mark. So what did it take? Let's find out. But before we do that, let's take a listen. Let's hear one of these motors up on the dyno. Let's make some noise. Or we can run our modified version of our L83 5.3 liter and try to make 500 horsepower, we obviously have to run a stock L83 5.3 liter and find out how much power we're starting with. And that's exactly what this is. Only kind of. <laughs> this one actually has a couple of changes to it other than stock. Now we all know that when we when GM rates their stock 5.3 liter L83. In fact, it has a dual rating, one based on gasoline and the other one based on E85. So that right there is going to change the power before we even get started. But the factory rating is actually rated the way that the motor is in the car. It's not rated at the tire, it's rated at the flywheel, but it's rated with all of the accessories, run with the factory tune, run with a complete exhaust system, run with a complete air intake system. So basically the way that the thing appears in the car the way that you are going to run it that's the power rating now the nice thing is on this l83 this direct injected motor they have two different ratings one for if you were going to run it on gas and the other running on e85 now we know e85 can add power in our testing i haven't seen a great deal of power change on the na motors um comparing 91 to e85 but when we run 91 when we run at west tech we normally run cold water, so we're able to run all the timing basically on 91. A lot of times you can't do that if you're running the motor in the car at temperature with a hotter charge temperature or a hotter air inlet temperature. So E85, can you can benefit from E85 because then you can run more timing. If you have to run 23 or 24 degrees of timing and you can bump that up where the motor wants to make peak power, which is going to be 28 or 29 degrees, you can then pick up power. So in uh, for GM, they originally rate this L83 at 355 horsepower and 383 foot-pounds when you run it on gas. Now, the rating jumps up to 380 horsepower and 416 foot-pounds when you run it on E85 because we're able to make more power with the E85 sometimes by itself, and then you're actually able to run more timing, which they do in that combination. So we ran this L83 stock. <laughs> when I say stock, it's not really stock. Everything on it is original, including the throttle body, the intake, the cylinder heads, the short block, all of that stuff. This was run with long tube headers. When I did my test previously, you can take a look at that video. It's up right now. I did a comparison of the stock exhaust manifolds versus long tube headers, and we didn't see much of a gain. But this one did have long tube headers on it. It also does not have the factory accessories run on it. So it has a, an electric water pump that's external in this case, because we ran this at Brian Tooley Racing, and it's external. So it's pumping the water through. It's not driving all the accessories. It's, it also has headers and no cat, so it has a different exhaust. It obviously also has an optimized tune, and it's also run on E85. So we kind of have the best situation for this, and that's why it made this kind of power level. Now, again, it was rated at 380 the way that GM does uh, with all of those things that I mentioned, but run on the dyno at Brian Tooley Racing. This is a stock motor with headers on it that made 405.5, so 406 horsepower. Torque was way up there at 300 or 436 foot-pounds. The other thing I need to mention is this cam was run with what Brian Tooley calls their DOD Delete. So it's a stock 5.3 L83 cam, but the lobes have been changed to not work with the DOD, the big heavy DOD lifters. Basically, it has all of the stock same lobes on it. So it makes the roughly the same power as the stock cam. It just allows you to delete the DOD, which a lot of guys want to do anyway. But as you can see, 
it makes awesome power. And to put this number into perspective, here's what a stock Gen 3 or Gen 4 uh, L83 or, or the stock LM7 makes that we, that we run all the time. And this is actually a fairly good LM7. This was with uh, this was a 5.3 with 706 heads and the stock camshaft and the stock compression, the stock uh, manual throttle body. It was run with headers, kind of in the same manner that we run this L83 with. But as you can see, it makes a lot less power and a lot less power everywhere. We can thank a couple of things uh, on this combination on comparing these two. The L83 makes more power because it has a number of good things going for it. One, it has more compression. It's 11 to 1 versus 9.5 to 1. It has a cylinder head that, that is, has, a, has a bigger port. Um, it flows a lot more. It has a slightly smaller, it has a smaller chamber than the 706 head. So it's got a lot of good things going for it. And I think that the intake on the L83 is probably every bit as good or maybe even better than the stock truck intake manifold. So the, and the big thing is the VVT cam. So it has a uh, cam specs that are probably similar, but being able to vary the cam uh, works very, very well. So we can pick up power down low, we can pick up power up top by advancing and retarding the camshaft and they do that. And what that does is produce a broader power curve. So the the LA3 compared to the Gen 3 and Gen 4 53 is just head and shoulders better. Um, but now this is our starting point. So let's find out how we get from here a little over 400 horsepower to over 500 horsepower on the LA3. Now that we understand how good the stock 5.3 liter LA3 is, let's figure out how to make it even better. And obviously because this LA3 has really good cylinder heads, has a good intake manifold, it's got plenty of compression, and we're not going to stick a stroker combination into up to displacement, it has enough displacement. The first thing that we want to look at, just like with the Gen 3 or Gen 4 LS, is a camshaft. Now it already has a VVT camshaft in it, which works pretty well, but let's face it, it's a stock VVT cam. And if we want to make big power numbers, we're going to have to step up in camshaft. And that's what exactly what the guys from Brian Tooley Racing did. They, they've got a number of these crate motors, and I'm going to show you some stuff at the end. You, if you guys are looking to buy one, they've got a ton of these LA3 crate motors, which would be really cool in some, some sort of project car especially if you put together one of these that made this kind of power. I mean, a 500 horsepower motor in almost anything is going to be a lot of fun. The other thing that could happen is you could combine that kind of power output with some kind of power adder, obviously, and make it even better. But let's figure out how to make this thing make more power. Right now, we're at 405 or 6 horsepower and 435 foot-pounds. The first thing that they did was install a stage 4, yeah, why? Because it's one better than a stage three. Do, 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 do. Yep, it does make lots and lots of power, but there is a price here. We take a look at this stage four cam from Brian Tooley Racing. The power output jumped to 479 horsepower, 478.6. Peak torque was up as well to 456.5. So we're going to call that 457 foot pounds. And the thing that I want you to look at is this. These runs were started at least with the stock cam all the way down at near 2000 RPM. Now this one started at 25 or 2600, right in the area where you're kind of starting to see a little bit of loss between the stage four and the stock cam. So it's pretty impressive even all the way down there. And again, this is a stage four cam. So this is the top of the line basically, probably until they come out with a stage five for the 5.3 liter L83 stuff. And as you can see, it gained torque kind of everywhere from below 3000, so 2800 or so, all the way up. So maybe a little bit of a stall converter in this thing. There is one downside to this camshaft. Because the 5.3 liter L83 has 11 to one compression like the other bigger motors, the bigger 6.2 liter stuff, that required a bigger uh, dome on the piston. So the 5.3 liter actually has the least amount of available piston to valve clearance of any of the LT families. So this particular camshaft, even though it's not very big, um, relatively speaking, it still required the motor to be taken apart and the pistons to be clearanced 
so that you could have the available piston and valve clearance necessary for this camshaft, which is only about 219 to 221 degrees of duration at 50 on the intake side, which is where, which is what is going to hit on this combination. So you could step down to a stage three cam, and I'm doing a video on that. We're going to compare the stage one, stage two, stage three, and even the factory L86 cam or and LT1 cam on this 5.3 liter because that's actually a fairly good upgrade as well along with a variety of different intake manifolds run on all of those camshafts because the thing is when you upgrade the intake manifold from an L83 to an L86 you're going to pick up power but the amount of power that you pick up varies with what kind of camshaft you have in it so there's no universal thing so it is kind of cool stuff I'm going to doing a big video on that and that will probably come out next but on this combination it was required to notch the piston. You can step down to an L83. Obviously, the power will be down, and we'll go over all that in the next video. But as you can see, we're not quite to 500 horsepower. So how do we get to 500 horsepower? Do we need to go up in displacement? Do we need to port the head? No, the only thing that we need to do is change the intake manifold. But just like the trade-off here in having to notch the valves with this stage four cam, there's also a trade-off in intake manifold. As we know, when you go down in runner length, when you put a short runner intake manifold on there, it typically picks up power at the top end. And then the trade-off is power down in the lower and middle part of the curve. And that's exactly what happened. We installed an MSD, the Air Force intake manifold on it, and picked up a lot of power. Take a look, the peak power, this is what allowed us to bring this 5.3 liter over 500 horsepower, 513 horsepower. Peak torque on this combination was actually down compared to the long runner, down to 444 foot pounds. So the trade-off below 5,300 or so is a slight loss in torque from the MSD but a big change in power out on the big end. So if you're going to rev this thing, and by the way, this thing also had a valve spring upgrade on it to allow for these camshafts and this RPM range. The thing that I like about this is it still has a pretty broad torque curve and it's up near 450 foot pounds. It's over 400 foot pounds from about 3000 RPM all the way out to 6,800 RPM. So that's a really broad torque curve. And this thing might be really cool since we're running it all the way up to 7,000 RPM. If you match this with a centrifugal blower, that would be really nice. Obviously, if you match this thing with a turbo, that would also be awesome. So there's no limit, obviously, to how much power these things can make. And remember, these are with stock cylinder heads. We haven't even ported the cylinder heads. And this is with a very small cam, relatively speaking. I had to put some fairly big camshafts in the Gen 3 and Gen 4 stuff on a 5.3. As a matter of fact, we had to go to the absolute limit of available piston to valve clearance and with with seriously ported heads and a really really good intake to get these things to make over 500 horsepower on a gen 3 or gen 4 motor and this thing did it with a cam and an intake manifold so obviously the factory heads flow really well we can make them flow even better, which might be a test for another day. So make sure, <laughs> let's get to our conclusion. But before we do, if you're looking for this kind of power, they, those guys have some crate motors. You can get one from the wrecking yard, do this cam and intake manifold upgrade if you're interested in it. Obviously they can hook you up with that. Now let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's our takeaway in this little adventure testing the Gen 5 5.3 liter L83? Well, two things. First of all, this thing started out very, very good. I mean, take a look at the comparison between the Gen 5 motor and a Gen 3 or Gen 4 5.3 liter. And we can see the Gen 5 motor isn't just better on the top or on the bottom. It's basically better everywhere throughout the entire RPM range. And we have a lot of things to thank for that. Obviously, higher compression, better head flow. It has a good intake manifold and it has variable cam, which works very well to broaden the power curve. So it starts out better. And what that means is it's going to be easier for us to get to any given power level with modifications and this gen 5 responds very well all it took was the right camshaft and intake manifold to push this thing over the 500 horsepower mark and we didn't just exceed it by a little bit it didn't just make 501 or 502 it made 512 or 513 horse horsepower so it exceeded the 500 mark by quite a bit but and this is very very important remember we did have to machine the piston to get the available piston to valve clearance to run this stage four cam <clears throat> if you don't want to do that stick the stage three in and away you go the other thing is we had to put the msd intake manifold on it which sacrificed power down low to get that big peak number on the top and the final thing and this is ultra critical make sure that your tuner 
knows what he's doing. To get the most out of these combinations with variable cam, your tuner has to be spot on. You can miss by a whole bunch and lose all of the power of the camshaft if you do not tune it properly. Armature Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More Gen 5 testing coming up.